How's it going everyone, Jesse here of Third Person, and today we are going over the Game of Thrones houses. First up, my favorite house, House Stark. So, let's get right into it. Their words, winter is coming, simply means winter is coming. The sigil, the dire wolf. The traits, dark brown hair, gray eyes, long faces, and lean builds. Yeah. Kind of a good job on casting there, HBO. So, let's move right into it. House Stark is one of the great houses of Westeros. You know... They were known as the Kings of Winter for like 8,000 years until Aegon the Conqueror rose to power, after which they became, you know, Wardens in the North. Kind of a big deal too, but, you know, not as big of a deal as being Kings of the North. You know, Kings of Winter, Kings in the North, still kind of a big deal. So, they have three relatives that we know of. Car Starks of Carhold, House Manderley of White Harbor, and House Dustin of Barrowton. Car Starks are a big deal, closely related, Manderley and Dustin not so much. So, these guys are a house of tradition. They are set in their ways. They worship the old gods. They believe that if you swing the sword, you must have given out the sentence. Because he who swings the sword gives out the sentence. And they were founded by Brandon the Builder, who is said to have built the giant freaking ice wall. Come on. That's not where their history stops, though. Because the Night's King is said to have been a Stark, and this guy has been around for ages, if you don't know already. Uh, Old Nan says he's a Stark. Other people say he's a Bolton, a Magnar of Skagos, an Umber of Flint, a Nori, or a Woodfoot. I mean, guy's gotta be a Stark. So, Carlin Stark was a young son of a Stark King in the North, who helped quell a rebellion from a lord and was rewarded with land. Now this land became known as Carl's Hold, which is now known as Carhold, descendants of the Car Starks. And that is kind of neat. I, I like that. The last king of the north before our young Lord Rob reclaimed the mantle and his cousin after he was Torin Stark, the king who knelt. He submitted to Aegon the Conqueror and possibly saved House Stark, so you know, kudos to Torin Stark but he paved the way for another guy. Lord Rickard Stark is the one who, with the help of his maester Wallace, set everything in motion. He had three sons, Eddard, Brandon, Benjen. Now, that's not only where he set everything in motion. He also sent Eddard to live with John Aaron at age eight, where he befriended Robert freaking Baratheon of House Baratheon. He also wed ben uh, Brandon, rather, not Benjen. Benjen never wed. He wed Brandon to Catelyn Tully, daughter of Hoster Tully then planned to wed his only daughter, Lyanna, to Robert freaking Baratheon of Storm's End. Now, his third son, Benjen, later took the black many years later. But, there's a reason for that. Brandon Stark, having defeated Peter Baelish for Catelyn's hand, headed out for King's Landing to besiege King Aris, the Mad King. Now, he wanted to have Rhaegar return Lyanna Stark to them after he quote-unquote abducted her. We all know what happened there. Now, not only was Brandon captured, but so too was his father and promptly executed by the Mad King Eris. Rickard was burned while Brandon strangled himself trying to save Rickard, so there we go. This didn't stop there, though. No, no. Eddard, having heard this, takes his father and brother's mantle, after John Aaron refuses to kill Robert and Eddard, that is, and he spearheads Robert's rebellion. That's right, Robert freaking Baratheon and Eddard Stark battling side by side, trying to take down the Mad King. But... But, Ned is a man of honor. As such, he runs north or to gather his men, and then he runs back south. He wins the Battle of the Bells, which results in Robert's rescue. You know, kind of necessary for Robert's rebellion. <laughs> this, result, uh, this resulted in him heading to, you know, River Run, wedding his late brother's betrothed, and then bringing House Tully into the fold, kind of strengthening their alliance, you know, Paving the way. So, we go from there. Ned leads a, re uh, a rebel army at the Battle of the Trident. It results in Rhaegar being smashed by Robert's Warhammer. I mean, kind of a big deal. Yeah. So, he went to King's Landing to assist Robert's ascension, only to find Jaime Lannister on the throne. Now, Jaime just gives it up. Okay, no big deal. But, big butt here. <laughs> big butt here. 
Ned heads to the Tower of Joy with Hal and Reed and four others. These guys take on three King's Guards. Only Hal and Ned, you know, they 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 survive. But bad news: Liana's in a bed of blood at the top of the tower, holding rose petals that are dead. Here, as we now know from the show, he promises to raise her new son as his own and not let Robert know the father. He then returns to Winterfell with a new son, a bastard in name, but, you know, he has royalty in his veins. Now, the war is won, so what happens? A rebellion. The Greyjoys. Uh, man, he, these guys, they just don't know when to quit, do they? So they're squashed by Ned and company. They take Balon Greyjoy's son Theon as a hostage slash ward to ensure loyalty. And there the show starts. Now, we all know what happens in the show. Ned gets beheaded. Everybody goes haywire. You know, John goes to the Night's Watch, becomes Lord Commander, dies. And in the show, spoiler for those of you who for some reason haven't seen the show, comes back to life. Freaking kills Ramsay Bolton, and he's now King of the North. There we go, short, simple, to the point, going right over Rob Stark and all of them doing all their crazy shenanigans. But, in a nutshell, that is how Stark, up to the point of, you know, the show, and a little beyond. Now, I'm going to ask one thing of you all, in the comments below, write down what house you want next, and I will look at them. I will take the one that has the most upvotes, or the one that's suggested the most, I don't care. Either way, write your comment, get your thing out there, and the next house will be decided by you. I want to thank you all, and, you know, this one was sh kind of rushed, <laughs> but there is quite a bit of history, and I had, I could have spent 20 minutes instead of the, like, 4 minutes or so I've spent here. I could have spent 20 minutes just going alone on, you know, Barrowtons and all that stuff because they pertain somewhat to the Starks. Well, not really the Barrowtons because, you know, they kind of suck, but yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.